Welcome to episode four in this series on creating a chat GPT application in Flutterflow. Hopefully you're enjoying the series so far and you are following along. In this particular episode, we are gonna focus on the responses that come back from the chat GPT service. We're gonna get the UI sorted so it renders everything quite nicely for us. And we're also gonna make a few little UI tweaks along the way as well. So without further ado, let's get cracking. So here we are then on the home page of our application. Let's choose the icon button just down here and then let's go up to the actions here and select open on the action flow editor. So this is where we left things on our previous video. So now we're gonna extend it now by adding another action. So just hit the little plus there under there and hit add action. And what we're gonna do here is we are going to call our custom function um, but from the update app state um, sort of action that we got here. So let's just hit the app update app state and on the set field we just need to hit add and then we're going to set the current conversation and of course at this point what we're going to do is we're going to call our custom function which is going to return back a copy of the current conversation but with obviously the addition of the chat gpt response so just hit current conversation here select update type and say set value and down here we're going to choose our custom function so just choose custom function here and we're just going to choose the refresh uh, chat history so just choose that one and then just down here the first thing that we're going to want to do is pass in the app state custom uh, uh, sorry the app state uh, current conversation and just hit confirm and then just down here this is where we need to make a slight little change now so we need to select this particular option here and we are going to choose the um, the action output so if you remember in our custom uh, action here when we invoke in that we actually put a chat result as the variable of the response the response it comes back so we are just going to choose action outputs and we're going to choose the chat result um, and, but here we're going to make a slight change we can actually say JSON path and we're going to actually work our way down to the particular block with inside the response that comes back from the API. So just very quickly, I'm going to show you what it looks like in the API reference that's on the platform system. So within, so within this particular area here, the chat, uh, create chat completion, this is the section which um, provides the response back. Okay, so if you look down here on the right hand side here, you can see this is a kind of an example here of the response that comes back. And what's going to happen is we're going to need to work our way down within inside this particular block. So by using JSON path, we can navigate our way down to this first particular entry that we've got here. And once we're there, we can then navigate our way down to this particular block. This is what we're interested in. This is what we want to put into our chat history list because that is the same structure as the as the actual message that we're actually putting in in our previous video when we're actually sending the messages. So we want our list to, to conform to the same structure as we're adding stuff into. And of course, by doing that, it means our logic is really, really simple on our homepage and we can simply show everything in a very, very simple chat conversation. Our list is always going to contain the same structure. Structure. So that's what we're going to do now. Just move back over to the here. And what we're going to do is we're going to choose choices because this is the very first uh, section of the um, of the open API. So we just choose here again, which is this particular block here. And now we're going to say it's the very first one that we need. And then it's the message. So just go back here. We're just going to say choices. And we're going to open with a square bracket. We're going to say zero there because it's the first one. And then we are just going to choose message. So that's simply that's all that we actually need to do. So just hit confirm. And then we just hit confirm now, and that's all that we need to do. So we're all set up now to handle our responses coming back. So now we're gonna add another action in now. Just hit the little plus option here and add action. And on this particular one, we're gonna to want to clear the text value that's been entered into the text prompt box. So let's just say clear text fields, just choose that. And then we just wanna choose the text prompt here as the field that we want to clear out. And the next up, we need to add another action in now. So this particular a action is going to be a wait action. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to um, we, we need to give the UI some time to catch up. So we're going to add the uh, we're going to do the clear the text fields. We're then going to want to put a little delay in here. Okay, because we're, we're going to want to wait for the the UI to be in a position ready to scroll down to the base of the chat. If we didn't put this in here, we'll find that we won't be able to get the scroll to the bottom of the chat because if, if the chat gets bigger it's going to fall off the bottom of the screen we're going to want to wait a few milliseconds and then we're going to want to then tell the action 
to then scroll to the bottom of the list. Okay, so we just need to put a wait delay in here. So just choose wait delay. And in here, the simple wait delay would just need to be, let's say, um, 800 milliseconds. Um, we could probably do something a little bit shorter than that, but let's just choose 800 for now. And then hit another little plus here, add action. And we're now going to want to choose um, scroll to. So this will allow us to then choose a uh, the list view of the of the chat just hit list, list view current here and we want to scroll to the end and I think um, 100 milliseconds, in fact put 200 milliseconds in there um, will just then allow us to scroll to the bottom of the chat box. I think that is it for this particular action at this moment in time and we are good. So at this point I think we are now ready to try running this application up. Let's see what happens when we uh, run it in test mode. So we're in test mode, let's fire a question at our application for the first time and let's see what happens. Okay, so it looks like we've got some uh, some UI issues that we need to deal with, and uh, and it looks like we're still waiting for a response to come back from ChatGPT. So there we go, we've got some response back from ChatGPT there. So we're kind of getting an accurate response, but we've got some issues in the UI that we need to address. We seem to be having a repeating conversation. So there's some bits that we need to change. So let's go and do that now. So here we are back on the home page of our application. One of the first things that we're going to want to sort out with some of our UI problems is the start of the conversation. We know that when we actually key something in at the very beginning of our application, the very first part of the conversation should be the question that we are asking the system. And of course, the second one then would then be the response. So we need to introduce some conditional logic here, some around the visibility of those entries within inside our list. So what we need to do is, but first we're going to focus on this particular section here, this particular row. Now, of course, if you've been in the programming space for a while, you would know that when you're dealing with um, lists of something, we know that it's it's everything is zero index based. Okay, so the very first entry within inside that list would always start at zero of course and if you had like 10 items in there it would start from zero to nine instead of one to ten so we know that zero is an even number so what we need to do is we need to say right the first entry this in our list if it's an even number then display it and of course the entry on the left hand side which would be the response coming back would always be positioned um, at an odd number so the next one in the list would then be one and then three and then five etc so they're all going to be odd numbers so let's just change some conditional visibility logic around the row for our first entry here so we're just going to focus on the row this is the this, our conversation this is the first entry that we're going to be putting in so just make sure you've got the row selected down here on the left hand so the widget, widget tree move up to conditional visibility just toggle that on and then here we just need to set some detail up within here so we want to choose code expression just here so just choose code expression and we're going to add an argument in and this argument that we're going to add in is going to be the index we're going to want to we want to kind of track the uh, the actual position uh, within inside our list so let's just choose um, and type in index here and then we're going to say that's of type integer so that's going to be a number and on the value just scroll down there uh, we just want to choose the chat current item and instead of saying no further changes we want to say the index in the list so we're always going to have this value called index come back which will determine our position within inside the list just hit confirm and then just scroll down here and we're just going to now put an expression in here so the expression I'm just going to paste in here now which I've got in the clipboard is this check which is going to look to see if the index is an even number and we know that um, zero is an even number so we're just going to just select that in here and we know that that's going to be the first one that will be displayed so just hit confirm oh we just need to check errors so let's just do that there we go we've got no errors come back and we're just going to hit confirm then there we go so that's all now set up for us now what we need to do is we now need to apply the logic to the one on the left hand side as well so let's do that now so let's select the row here on the left hand side here that's got to conditional visibility let's just turn that on select this and then we can say code expression and we're just going to say very similar to what we just did previously we're just going to say check choose that and then say index choose integer choose the value chat current item and then choose index and list hit confirm scroll down to the expression i'm just going to paste this in here so this is now doing the reverse of the condition. So we're saying it's not equal to zero. So it's not equal to an even number. Check errors. And hit confirm. 
So just before we fire this up into test mode, let's just make a couple of other UI tweaks here. So where it says hello world there, we just want to change the text up here to copy response like that. And then just further down here on the actual icon button, we want to just change some properties here on the right hand side. So just with that selected, just move down here and we want to turn on this option where it says show loading indicator. So we just choose that there and that is all that we need to do. So now when we hit the actual send button now, we'll start to see that loading indicator. So let's now fire this up into test mode and let's see if we resolved our problem with our chat history. So we're in test mode now. Let's um, add a question in there. How many moons does Saturn have? Let's hit the send option. Okay, we're seeing that visual response there, which is great. We're seeing the first question that's been added to our list is the question that we're actually asking. And I'm hoping we'll see the response on the left hand side. There we go. So we're seeing now a response that's coming back. Let's ask another question. Which one is the largest? Hit send. There we go. So we're getting a response back. So as you can see there, we've now solved that problem. Um, the next problem that we've got, of course, is we seem to have this quite vertically narrow um, sort of container window. So we now need to sort those out as well. So let's move back over to the UI builder and get those fixed. So we're back on our home page now. What we're going to do is we're now going to sort out the conditional size of this particular panel here. So it's going to be based on the screen width that the actual user is using. So on the left hand side of the widget tree, let's just go down to the row here. Let's just drill down a little bit deeper, drip, drip down into the, the column there and choose the container. Um, now, for whatever reason, I've got this quirk, I think, in Flutterflow where we've got this um, conditional visibility selected, which we don't actually need. So let's just turn that one off. and uh, We don't need that actually at this particular point. Um, and with inside this container, we're only going to now want to set that width um, based under various screen width conditions. OK, so just with this one selected, move over to where it says width and just choose this option just here. And what we're going to do is we're going to choose a conditional value if then else so choose that and at the very top here we are going to want to put a condition in this particular first block here okay so just select that and we are going to go under a normal condition here and we're going to do a single condition and the first value that we're going to do is the and look is going to look for the actual current screen width okay so if we just select that here and type in screen and then you can just see here that we've got screen width so Flutterflow is providing this convenience uh, value here, which is a global property, which ha has our screen width. Hit confirm. And we're going to just go down here and choose where it says equal to. We're going to say if it's great, if it's greater than or equal to a particular uh, sort of width of the screen. OK, so just choose greater than or equal to. And then when the second value, we are just going to just go down here to the value source and say specific value. And it's just going to be simply uh, one, one, seven, zero. OK, so anything that is greater than that, then this will be of this particular size. So just hit confirm. And then the value of it is going to be is just simply 700. So the width of this particular container will be of um, 700 if the screen width is greater than or equal to 1170 in number of pixels. OK, there is a further condition that we now need to put in. We we'll just hit the plus option just here and we've got this otherwise condition. So we're going to do something very similar now. We're just going to choose this here. It's going to be a condition, a single condition. And at the first value here, we are going to then also do a screen width. Just select that, just hit confirm. And we're going to say here that it's actually less than or equal to. So just choose less than or equal to. And on this instance, it's just going to be simply the value is going to be less than 470. So just say specific value and choose 470. Just hit confirm. So we've got that in there. And of course, the value that we're going to put in here is it's going to be 300. So it's going to be the width of that container is going to be it's going to be only 300 when the screen width is 470 pixels or less. OK, so we're just going to get it slightly smaller than the typical mobile display. And then in the else value, we're just going to set this as 530. So we're just going to keep that as the, if they, and it, those conditions are not met, then it will just set it as 530. So just hit confirm. And that is set up there. Now, we, what we're going to do is we're now going to just play, press this again. And we're just going to go up to this little option here and say copy variable. So we're going to take this and we're going to apply it also to our next row. So let's just move down to our next row here. Just expand that out again. I've got that little visibility issue there, which I'm just going to turn off. So just with that selected, 
just turn that conditional visibility off and then with inside this container we're just going to go over to the width again just select that here and at a convenience we're just going to hit the paste option so that we're just going to apply exactly the same rules to that particular container as well just hit confirm and we should be good so let's now test that now back in test mode and see what it looks like so i've got my question loaded just hit the send option and we're starting to see a slightly larger text box which is quite nice there probably very similar to what we had before but hopefully we should see now the response should be in our wider response there we go the only other little, little quirk that we've got there is now that our, our text now is now uh, centrally positioned we just need to align that to left hand side so let's quickly do that now Okay, so back on the home page, then let's sort out this alignment issue. So let's just choose the text there, and we want to choose the column that's just above. So just select the column in the widget tree there, and we just want to move the cross axis alignment over to the left hand side. So it's back, to, it's basically at the start. And we also then need to do the same thing up here on the, the text content here. Just choose the column that's just above, and then just choose the cross axis alignment to the start. So let's quickly just test that in the test mode, just make sure we're getting the visual look that we need. So I'll put a question in on test mode. It's a little bit longer, this question. Let's hit send and let's see what it produces for us. As you can see here, we've now got our left alignment, which is really nice. Hopefully we should see a good representation on the response back. So there you go, got the response back there. It looks much, much better now. We've certainly got that, that look of a nice conversation with some nice width as well with inside our application. So there you go. Hopefully you're enjoying the series so far. It's finally good to get some responses coming from the chat GPT service and getting them displayed with inside the UI. In the next video, we're going to focus our attention on some animation to give the application just a little bit more visual appeal. Um, please do like the video. Please do subscribe to the channel as well if you just love following along with these type of tutorials. Um, there'll be so much more coming in the future. And feel free also as well to look me up on social media as well. The links are just there on the slide. So until the next one, I'll look forward to seeing you soon.